So, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of uh, understanding, especially Venus, marriage, relationship through cycle of creation. Okay, so cycle of creation. Here you have these four elements, water, air, fire, and earth. And although in the cycle of creation, there's a fifth element, which is known as the sky, ether. But in, especially when we're looking at a chart, you know, uh, the only thing that is known as ether is Jupiter and Rahu. They're the controller of the ether and the sky. So basically, we mainly deal with these four elements in actual Vedic astrology. Meaning, water sign, okay, so you see water, right? Water sign will be represented by Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. I'm just putting their first letter because I don't have enough space to show a lot of other things. So Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces is water. So just like air would be Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Fire would be Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Right? ALS. Then Earth would be Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. TVC. But one thing you should do and understand in the cycle of creation is this. You can start at any point. It's not like you have to start from here or here or here. So for example, let's say if I take Let's just start from the water. Water creates air. Air creates fire. Fire creates earth. And earth creates water. So this is the cycle of creation. It's kind of like if you look at this particular cycle, you're looking like you're looking at a chart of ancestry, lineage, and mainly parent. Who creates us? Even though this consequential question can be very philosophical, well, God created us or some omnipresent created us. We only came into this physical being through our parents, mother and father. So, four air signs, okay? So, four air signs. Water is the parent. For air, water is the mother and father. For fire, air is the mother and father. For earth, fire is the mother and father. And for earth, or I'm sorry, for water, earth is the mother and father. So you see the cycle of creation happening, but when we go back, we start to see who is the authority to create this particular element. So I hope this has kind of like just made sense from this particular graph. So if we take this, the blue is the parent. The blue arrow is the parent and red is the creation. So this, the red is showing that water is creating air but water is the parent of air. So now, if let's say, okay, in a horoscope, in a particular birth chart, you have Venus here. I'm going to put V just to symbolize Venus. You put Venus right there in an air sign. It could be any one of these. It could be Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. Okay, 
So this is, let's say we say this is your Venus. Then we can go, for example, your partner's chart, okay? Venus is here. This is partner. Your spouse, your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever. So remember, air is creating fire, not the other way around. So when this particular Venus is in air sign, your Venus is in Gemini, your partner's chart is in um, Aries. Okay? It's in Aries. That means you will not listen. You will not be kind of like becoming subservient to fire. But fire has to listen and be subservient to air. Because it's that parent-child relationship. Parent is the one says, look, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get up in the morning. You're going to eat at this time. Then we're going to take you to school. Then we're going to take you to extracurriculum activities. You're going to come back. You're going to have two hours of your iPad time. Then you need to do your homework, eat dinner, and go to sleep. Child is not telling the parent, okay, listen, I'm going to first play, you know, um, Fortnite for the first five hours. Then if I feel like I'll get ready for school and then after that, I'm going to play some video games. Then maybe I'll do homework. Then you provide me dinner. It doesn't work that way. So when you have Venus, which is the unionship, the love in an air sign, while the other has Venus in a fire sign, this for them to command anything to the air Venus will create conflict will create conflict of authority okay so this is the way you understand that concept of compatibility of venus on the most basic level now if we let's say go back okay so the first thing that you want to understand is this we did these two right I showed you these two examples, but one thing you need to understand, okay, is that this has animosity with that and vice versa. And this has animosity with that and vice versa. Meaning water will consider fire its obstacle and fire will consider water its obstacle air will consider earth its obstacle and earth will consider air its obstacle so now if you understand this particular dynamic okay so let's say your venus is here your venus you know let's say it's in uh, Scorpio and your partner's Venus okay is in Aries we're talking about love understanding devotion unionship will that take place between these two Venuses on the surface level no they're gonna be <laughs> they're gonna be arch enemies one is coming from the flow of emotions. The other is coming from the flow of action. So what happens here, okay, this person, okay, is expecting this water from this particular Venus. Right, we, we want love the way we want to feel love. So they're expecting the fire to bring them water. And the fire one 
the fire Venus is expecting fire from water. And this is where the misunderstanding comes in when it comes to love, romance, intimacy. One wants to feel loved the way they have grown with their element. The other wants to feel love from the other person the way they feel love is. This person want to sit probably in front of the fire with a glass of champagne wine, reading a poetry book of romantic poetry of Rumi or Hafiz with their partner. This person, the fire person, feels much more close to their partner when they're hiking together, when they're creating ideas, when they're talking about making something happen. This person wants to have a, like a, a hot chocolate in the bed while, you know, snuggling. This person, okay, wants to go out there and go to the gym, do yoga and talk about how they can, you know, better the lives, better their body, create. One is trying to sustain, one is trying to create. This is where the biggest misunderstanding happens. See, the understanding of parent and child, that can actually work out. Because this Venus will understand that, okay, for some reason, I listen to my air partner. And the air Venus will be like, you know, whenever I tell my fire partner something, they actually do it. This is amazing. This is great. And that's when that kind of like that, that, parental relationship has that bondage that okay we can understand each other okay so and you can again go if if somebody's venus okay is in let's say gemini the other person's venus you know let's say it's in capricorn what is happening again a conflict they want to talk, talk, talk. They want to do, do, do. They think this, their spouse does too much timing of wastage by talking about things and never doing it. This person will think they never discuss before they do anything. They never do it. They never discuss with me when they're make, planning something. Regardless of if it's Capricorn, Virgo, or Taurus, they will all have their subtle differences, but it is that Earth sign. That's the conflict. But again, if your partner's Venus, okay, if you, if let's say your Venus is in Taurus, your partner's Venus, okay, is in Pisces. So what's happening now? Okay, you, this becomes the parents, this becomes the child. So now, they, there will be harmony between these two. And naturally, water sits on earth. Water is not in, in, in sitting in the air, water is sitting on earth. So we see that when this person advises something to them, this person is willing to listen and take action. And they'll be like, I do want to listen to my partner, even though, you know, as a child, I may not want to follow some of these things. But what happens between a child and parent relationship, when a child requests something, please, you know, can I get this? Look, listen, I did my homework. Can I get that? And the parent will be like, sure. Okay, go get it. So. It's not like that's how relationships are going to be between these some, but there's this understanding that, okay, I know that you listen to me as your wife or your husband, but you know what? Yes, you can do this. You can. So there's this harmony between this cycle versus the harmony here. So this becomes the basic understanding of even in horoscope matching. So what we're gonna do is let's look at chart of two people. And this is actually from my 
one of you guys, this is one of the students from Mahagavedika Astrology Academy, because remember I asked to send the chart uh, if you're married or if, you know, especially with the in intimacy part. So we're going to look at your chart and see how just this part is working so you can understand. And then how do you actually work this part out? If this is what's happening in your chart, how do you work that out? So let's look at that. Hey, thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you want to watch the extended full video of the cycle of creation, please check out the links here, careschannel.thinkific.com under Care's Vlogs, which are my uncensored vlogs where I talk about everything and anything that has to, anything to do with astrology and can be discussed in astrology. And you will find all my other courses as well there. Otherwise, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.